Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 20 of the Novid Notes podcast, uh, where we talk about many different types of creators, communities, and everything else inside and outside of VR chat. And with me today, I do have the original founder of the Rindo Cult community, Rylan. Rylan, welcome to the Novid Notes podcast. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for it. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing well as, as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, I was going to say, you know, so for those of the general listening audience on YouTube and Spotify, you know, kind of briefly explain who exactly you are and what exactly do you do? So I uh, like you introduced me as I was the original founder of the group, the Rindo Cult. It was a, oh, it is a hangout community that I started uh, in November of 22. Um, it was originally just going to be like a shit post between a couple friends of mine who all use the same base model on this game, but um, it quickly evolved into something way more than that. Um, the community grew way faster than I thought it would. Um, like I said, we started, I want to say November 22nd, I'm pretty sure, of 22. Might have been the 23rd. Um, and as of today, being uh, July 10th, uh, recently passed 3,000 members in the VR chat group and approaching 1,000 on our Discord. Jesus. Yeah, fair enough. I was going to say, yeah, no, the Rindo cult <laughs> is uh, definitely a force to be reckoned with, um, with its continuous growth. <laughs> um, realistically, like, despite the fact of, like, it only being around for two years, you know, the Rindo is probably one of the biggest base models out there. Um, I mean, you have many different content creators who use it. And, you know, you'll see that you if you don't go to a black cat or a great pug and see a Rindo, you're you're pretty lucky, to be honest. You, you see them all the time, almost. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, dude, they're around every corner. Uh, trust me, I know. <laughs> Yeah, so out of, out of curiosity, you know, you, you said it started like as a friend group. So kind of kind of to go back into that time period. Um, so what sparked the idea of making, you know, the Rindo cult, you know, but like kind of go into more detail into that. So it was me and four others. I don't remember all their names. It's been a long time. Um, it was myself, someone we nicknamed Bagel and then someone by the name of Reginald. Um, and then the two others who I'm blanking on right now. Um, and we were all in an LS media when you could still actually watch movies there. Uh, and we were all in a window together and someone threw out the offhanded comment, Hey, what if we made a discord server about this? Hey, they were obviously saying it as a joke, but this was me two almost two years ago. Who was like, you know what? Fuck it. We ball. Um, so I did, by the end of the day, we had, like, the five of us, and then the next day we had, like, closer to ten, and then it kind of grew exponentially from there um, to where it is now. Fair enough. And I was going to say, right, like, with, you know, with the extended growth, because two years, realistically, for a community, it's not a long time by any means. You know, no, so not. to go from like a group of five to 10 and then two years later, as of July, you know, 10th, as we're recording this, you're at 3000. That's absolutely yeah, absurd. No. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just to kind of go into that a little bit more. So what what were like the steps of growing the Rindo cult? You know, you said it was a friend group and whatnot, but like what actually kicked off some of like the larger growth? So between like the course of just a few months of each other, there were two major events. There was VRCon in December, which I wanted to get a booth for VRCon, but because we had started so late, applications were already closed and there was no way in hell I was going to be able to make a booth in time that like followed their guidelines. Um, so what I did was I set up a world constraint on an AVI that had a booth and the booth that actually became like kind of an icon in the whole group. It was a folding table with like those like green folding chairs, not the like metal ones, but the fabric ones all, all gathered in a half circle under a tent. And there was a banner on the front that said, uh, join the Rindo cult and with a discord link. And I sat in with like four others in the VR con instance, 
for hours every day that it was open. Um, and that got us like our initial foothold. What really sold us and got us to be where we're at, like closer to where we're at now, was Project Festival last year. Uh, and this was about end of June, I want to say. Um, and um, I was able to get us an actual booth. Um, I applied early enough in time, which thank God. Um, and I, I had the idea of, hey, maybe I'll try like a different booth design, but uh, everyone who was on staff at the time was like, no, give us the original one. So we had the original folding table, chairs, tent, and we had people always there. And from what I remember, it was the most popular spot at Project Fest last year. Um, people always sitting there shooting the shit. And that that was what really got us to grow as fast as we did. No, absolutely. And I was going to say, right, because I, I remember specifically with uh, the Project commu uh, the Project Fest 2023 one, um, you actually uh, on the sign um, and we'll we'll throw it. We'll throw it up on the screen. Um, but I remember specifically it said uh, Rindo cult, but cult was slashed out and it said religion. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, guys, we're, we were not a cult, I promise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so you know, uh, out of curiosity, you know, what what made the what was the design, or I mean, not the design because I'll be on screen, but what was like the influence behind like the original design of the booth back in the VRCon era? Um, I guess it was just. To, uh, I was kind of a comfy idea because at some point in your life, everyone, like most people have gone to one of those booth setups where it's just like one of those blue fold out tents with a folding table and chairs. And it's, it's almost nostalgic um, for a lot of people. It was nostalgic for myself because I, I played baseball when I was younger and I, I remember always seeing those at different games. So it was like, it felt a little bit like home. And it was just a comfy spot. It wasn't something over convoluted. Um, no disrespect to anyone who did make over convoluted booths. They were always great looking, but it just, it was a good spot to just sit and chill. No, absolutely. And I was going to say, I remember one of the memories I have, and I don't know if there's any footage of it or anything. Uh, I'm going to have to do maybe some extra research, but uh, if there's pictures or anything, but I remember specifically, um, I don't remember who it was, but I remember specifically there was one or two people that were just sleeping at the Rindo cult booth, uh, in 2023. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember who it was, but, uh, if you're out there, we I remember, uh, I remember one of them. I remember one of their name, uh, actually two. I think I remember the both you might have saw. It was Ding who uh, was an admin for a very long time, um, and then Azimaz, um, which she was there about twenty four seven, repping the booth when I wasn't able to because I wanted to go to sleep. Um, but no, she was a like, fucking crackhead about it and, and was there almost the entire time. No fair. I it's definitely. Uh, it, see, that's the thing, right? When it came from 2023 to 2024 fest, um, I was always the crackhead, whatever I could be, um, you know, and I'd just be, <laughs> I'd be going to not only like a good portion of the events, but if, if there was no event going on back to the booth, we going back, like, <laughs> you know, we, we back to the booth, uh, <laughs> Right. Well, you know, it's it's different when you have like a community that can represent your booth, um, you know, and be there in your stead. Um, and I and I had a few people myself. I had I had a uh, quite a handful of people actually. Two two of them were my mods, but uh, um, the a few of them just like after they met me, like probably day one, day two, the rest of it, they were just kind of chilling at the booth, which is kind of wholesome. Wasn't expecting it. It's, oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But um. So I was going to say, right, with so let's talk a little bit more about the community itself. You know, so back in, let's say, the early days, what what type of events and stuff did you guys hold like in the very beginnings compared to, you know, what they do now? They haven't changed much. Um, it is general hangouts or we occasionally do game nights. Um yeah, and I, I heavy emphasis on occasionally. It's like maybe a once a month kind of thing. Um, but I mean, when it came to like 
I, I still pretty vividly remember the first meetup we did. I There were maybe, I want to say 30 people in our Discord, tops. And I hosted a, this was before the groups instance, uh, group, groups was introduced. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I had to host this as a Friends Plus. And it was at a midnight rooftop, Friends Plus. And a total of nine people showed up to it. And <laughs> I, I big numbers, I know. Um, <laughs> but I, I dude, I, me, like this was, I want to say it was really early December. I think the seventh, I want to say. Um, and nine people had showed up and I was ecstatic. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like more than one person showed up. Um, and it was insane to me. Um, but yeah, no, we just kept on. We we do hangouts um, every Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday is more European centric. It's about like noon my or it starts at like eleven my time. I'm MST. Um, I'm Pacific Standard without daylight savings. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and then Friday night ones, uh, US night. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we just like honestly it's a whole bunch of people who get together shoot the shit talk about avatars together it's not always talking about rindo a lot of people like hell most of our staff aren't even rindos anymore um but it was never about that it was it was always about just having a mutual thing to talk about that's fair yeah i say i guess it would be kind of i mean it'd be no different than like the ugandan knuckles if that's all you guys did was just like be rindos <laughs> yeah. i guess so I, it's kind of I'm kind of glad to hear that you know it evolved from that I guess per se. It's still a funny story regardless. Um, <laughs> you know I, I was gonna say you know what one of the things and this is something that's been on my mind because um, I'm pretty sure you've seen my Ugandan variant of myself. So I kind of had yeah I think I think I did see that. I, I low key had a goal, and I don't know if I still want to commit to this yet, but one of the goals I wanted to do was to have a variant of a, a, a massive amount of avatar bases, but it's me. I still don't know if I want to commit to that. Yeah, yet. See, I, I mean, I did that for project festival. Cause like I swapped onto using Moe. Um, I just like, I, I, her face tracking is really good compared to most other avatar bases. Um, but for Project Festival this year, I made a rindo of this, like, same hair, same eyes, uh, the horns, just changed an outfit. Um, mm -hmm. Just because, technically, I was still a representative of the cult, so I just had to throw that out there. No, of course. And, you know, as, uh, you know, as of things progress, you know, um, you've been kind of delving more into, like, you know, content creation and whatnot, and um, as, as, well, they might not know but i do remember you saying that you kind of stepped down you know from rindo cult but you're still the founder um but like in a leadership position if i remember correctly um and if i remember you remember 100 percent correctly yeah and i was gonna say that was um oh god that was was that early this year or late last year i don't remember it I'm... was it was early january i want to say the second um everyone's still glad you're at least still around um, because I know some, uh, as uh, people I've talked to in the past, you know, uh, once they're, you know, done with the community, I've had people tell me, you know, yeah, we just dropped off the face of the earth, you know, so it's good to see that you're still at least having fun with the community. You're just not, you know, in that leadership oh, absolutely, yeah. area. So I will give you kudos, you know, to at least sticking with the community in some way, shape and form. Um, you know, so out of curiosity um what in you know you don't have to answer this if it's too much but like what kind of led you to that decision um so it was at the point that i stepped down like i said it was it was early january and i started the group late november of 22 i was running that group as like my my official title for most of that year was cult leader so when people saw me in a public space, I was like the front face of the group. And it kind of got to me when like something happens behind the scenes. I'm the one they go to. Um, I didn't like being the front face. I, I didn't like being the poster child. Um, so I 
I um I thought I had been talking with my staff for months prior about doing it. I just didn't want to like say one day, all right, here's all this work. I'm just going to drop it in your lap. Good luck. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was, it was mostly just from like the stress of, because the community was rapidly growing and I wasn't like mentally ready to handle all that. And um, didn't want to be like the poster child. Like I said, um, Mm -hmm. So stepping back, let me still be in a position where I could say, hey, I started this group and I ran it for a long time, but this group is like, I am not this group. Um, like, I mean, it, it got fr like to the point of where people would just only know me for that. So I, I wanted to be known for something else. So I stepped back. That's fair. No, and uh, that actually, you know, a same same kind of situation for a lot of communities in that case um you know and es especially as how fast it grew i can definitely see where the uh where like it starts to climb and things get more burdened on the shoulders um so i i definitely understand that uh so i guess something that i'll ask you um as a kind of general advice for you know maybe any community leaders kind of listening watching um if you had a piece of advice um when it comes to those type of situations you know, what type of advice would you give to like maybe community leaders who are kind of experiencing similar situations? Um, I, I do have one piece of advice and I've told this to people who have like, they, I had people approach me at uh, Project Festival 23 asking about like, hey, I'm thinking of starting a group. What, like I, I had that same exact question asked to me. I'm gonna look directly at the camera to say this. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Do not. It's gonna be rough. And it was rough for me for a long time. And I, I was burdened with the idea of this has got to be me. I'm doing everything. I'm working on the world. I'm working on how the servers run, moderation. It becomes a lot really, really fast. So don't just, like, do not be afraid to just say, I need help with this. Can someone, like, anyone? Um, I learned that too late, and that's... If I had learned that earlier, I probably would still be running the group now. But no, that's it is a, what it is. That's a very wise piece of advice. Also, something I learned, because, uh, yeah, I know Rylan said she was going to look at the camera and she looked off in the distance. Yeah, apparently it's desynced. So, fun fact, we, <laughs> we, we learned something today. <laughs> Uh, unless you, <laughs> all right, <laughs> but that it's, it still stands where it is. No, it was, it was very wise advice. Um, you know, <laughs> you learn something new every day. Um, it just so happens that, uh, yeah, I guess cause it was a good chunk of time when I joined the instance, when you joined, it just desynced. It happens. Yeah, um, that's whatever. Darn my bowel movements. Anyway, um, <laughs> but back to, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a hot day with the porcelain throne, <laughs> bro. For real, for real though. Um, but but yeah. So and you, uh, you know, you actually made you know the world for Rindo Cult. So what kind of inspired, like, what kind of inspired making the actual like hangout world? So. I'm going to correct you on half of that there. I didn't make it. Uh, it was a prefab world I bought. Fair. Um, <laughs> we love prefabs in this house. <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was cuddled by the fireplace by Wispy Woo. Um, it was the perfect mix of just like a comfy spot without it being like one of those places where the entire floor is covered in like blankets and shit. Um, it just seemed like someone's house they made. Like, um, and um i all i really did was i put the neon signs on the front that said rindo cult um just because i didn't want it to be entirely just base but with some texture changes um i changed all the pictures in there and um i don't think i don't know if i was in charge of the world at this time because i passed it off to azimaz um a few months after mm. but the the world is like it's a comfy like almost i don't want to call it a library but it, you could almost call it that it's got books all over the walls um and we had our media production team design book covers for all of them that involved like either rindo 
CEO or some staff member or just some stupid inside joke we had. There's a, a there's a one of them that's it's 1983 by Josh Oswald. Um, <laughs> that, that's a, that's a dated opposed, reference, uh, but fair. <laughs> 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 it was literally 1984. Um, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it's like I like I said, I, I didn't make it. I just like put some time into making sure it appeared unique. And then I passed the project over to Azanaz, which um, she like added a whole bunch of extra stuff, like some personalized items for all the staff members in the world. I've got one of those. Uh, Ikea sharks in there because I have some on my couch right over there. Um, I have too many of them. Uh, and like uh, a vending machine that's got personalized cans for most of our staff members or people who have just been very influential in the community. Um, like all, all of the like tiny little details in that world are they, there's purpose behind them. They're not just shit posts we threw without. It's people who have done something important. So it's it's really cool to be able to see that. Um, and I know that I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but, you know, I, I haven't been told otherwise there's going to be a new world that's going to be released here pretty soon. I don't know when, but um, our world dev has been working on something from scratch. So oh, we're all excited. Fair enough. Yeah. I, we love made from scratch worlds, not to, not to down prefab worlds as somebody who uses a prefab world for my world. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you in the prefab world. <laughs> Uh, big shout out Wispy Woo for making mm. amazing prefabs. Cause uh, I'll say mine, <laughs> mine's mine's also mine's also a Wispy Woo prefab. So I can't I can't Dude, say Wispy anything. World worlds are great. They're they're absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yo Wispy, if you ever hear this, uh, if you want to come on the podcast, you know, let me let me know. Uh, I would love to talk. Anyway, um, enough ta- uh, tangenting on that. Uh, Cause uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of my uh my uh constant viewers to be like yo you need to stop you know insert uh joke here um about wispy we trying to get them on the podcast anyway um hey. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying anyway um no but it, no prefab worlds are definitely useful for those that are not used to you know world creation and blender and unity um Fuck Blender. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Blender. Hey, you be nice to Blender. <laughs> I will throw Blender inside of a Blender and we'll call it there. <laughs> but, okay. Okay. <laughs> me and Blender, uh, and maybe it's just because I run everything off of a laptop. Uh, but yeah, me and Blender. Oh, well... <laughs> <laughs> me and Blender are not nice to each other. No. <laughs> I Blender was nice to me when I was at Project Fest last year. I was on a laptop and I did almost all my avis fully in Blender. Actually, no, I had to do all of them fully in Blender because I used parts from other avatars. I was using a Rindo body with parts from Aruna and I had to fit those on. Interesting. Fair. <laughs> Interesting, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, so out of, out of curiosity, just to kind of go more... Um, into your involvement with the community so you know because you were one of the original founders so one of the things i wanted to ask um so behind the scenes right uh was there ever a moment in your community that was probably like the funniest or most cursed moment that never saw the light of day um Ah, oh, there is uh man i would love to be able to talk about the stuff behind the scenes uh but like I, I, as much as I can say, because they sure. they have some pretty like while you were in, closed doors. Yeah, um, let, we'll say in the past, just so yeah, because I know you guys, I know all communities yeah. have their. Secrets. All I can really tell you is uh, is our quotes channel. Like we have a staff quotes channel. It's fucking hilarious. The kind of shit that gets said. I can't say more than that, but there is some unhinged shit in there um, <laughs> that I, I, I wish I could get into details on, but I, I don't know if they'd be too happy with me. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll say, uh, as, as a hardworking community, like, there's always those types of moments of unhingedness. It goes with literally any community. Oh, God, yeah. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter like <laughs> if it's the most wholesome community. Like, you get a staff quotes channel, it'll be the most unhinged shit you will ever see. 
Oh god, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> which out of, con- out of context would get a lot of us canceled on Twitter. But we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> but so let, let's kind of let's. Yeah, I don't let, even know. If I... Go ahead. I I, I can um uh I I'm trying to look through to see if I can even say any of these here about the only one that I think I can get away with because it's something I said back in October of twenty three. Reads and I quote, I could probably make a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 a... I mean, yeah, fair. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, it's definitely it's definitely good to see that your staff can you know get along and you know shit post on each oh, other absolutely. and have fun. Um, I'll say it definitely definitely takes a lot you know uh to run a community like that especially with how massive it's grown uh over the two years it's been around um so yeah let's get more into yours you know what you do now so you know you do you're you're pretty much everywhere nowadays there's i've seen you in so many different types of instances and um you know you do content creation you do stream a little bit you know once at a blue moon um (laughs) that's probably the best way to phrase it probably um yeah (laughs) so with that right you know what kind of you know what really got you to like go out into the metaverse more you know obviously you know a part of it obviously had to do with you know stepping down from the leadership side but like what what do you do nowadays like what 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 does what is rylan now so um i've been trying like i don't want to say avoiding but um distancing myself from like a lot of different community-based stuff just because i want to try and grow as my own person um Cause I mean, like I've done a lot in the past few months, um, back in January, I got engaged, um, which was very exciting. Um, congratulations. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And, um, thank you. Um, but I mean, I, I dapple in, like, I don't want to call it content creation cause that's, uh, I, I have my own gripes against content creator. Well, air quote content creators. Fair. Um, uh, but like i mean i post on twitter i try my best to post at least once a day um and then yeah once in a blue moon i stream but again that's very heavy emphasis on once in a blue moon because i I stepped away from that uh, on 22 because it was eh, the same reason i stepped away from the rindo call was because it was too centralized on me no one really gave a shit about each other it was always me 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 and I, i i never liked that um my my goal was always to try and bring people closer together, but you know, like I've got a friend group I hang out with every night. I post on Twitter every day. Like, uh, I I don't do a lot now, which has honestly been a nice change of pace. Because going into starting the Rindo cult, I never went in with the idea of coming out with fame, but it was something that grew naturally. And at the time, I appreciated it because I was like, whoa, people know my name. I had people recognize me in public, and it was like, oh my gosh, that's cool. And then you kind of forget how nice anonymity being anonymous is um, mm-hmm. until you've got it back. And now I'm in a position where I have that back. I can go in public instances, and no one knows me. It's, it's nice. But I mean, um, other than like that i i was hanging out with adventure team for a little while um which those guys were cool but um a little for lack of better term low energy for my likes uh hey <laughs> eventually eventually my love so. you guys i'm just gonna throw that out there right now um anyways <laughs> but yeah no um i oh, know see those guys are great for real yeah no i was gonna say um yeah, a few of their a few of their members uh, are good friends of mine, and uh, they join my community as well. And they're all they're all absolutely lovely people. Um, but yeah, you know, I was gonna say it's definitely been it's definitely been a different change of pace because I kind of kind of going in reverse of how like how you kind of described your situation. So you know, because as somebody who started a community mainly just as a friend group to 
you know, have fun, hang out and start working on projects with other communities um, <laughs> and project community. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wordplay. We love to see it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, and working with uh, many creators and getting to know the origins of creators. It's definitely it's definitely an interesting thing. Um, and all, all of the amazing people I've had on this podcast have been very kind and, you know, of course, love to advertise their own episodes and sometimes others episodes as well. And, um, it's, I'm starting to get to that point to where people recognize me in publics, not group publics, but publics. And I'm kind of on that verge of like, ah, I don't know if I like this or not. Um, it's very, <laughs> it's very nice, and the main thing is, is they'll recognize me because of my face, the hat, the shades, and the mask, because um, that's been my signature look since pretty much forever. Um, you know, but yeah. the, they start to recognize, you know, the stuff, and they'll be like, like, oh yeah, you're the guy that runs the podcast, and I'm like, oh, you watch my shit cool like and and they're, they're, it's it's yeah. all it's all wholesome right but like at the same time it's like man it's weird it's this weird is weird say. yeah it, it's weird to say the least so you know to that point i kind of i kind of understand granted i dug myself into this hole um but it, it's one of those it's definitely an interesting thing. And with my community, and this is one of my core beliefs, and I, I, I'll i say this to the day I die, without the many people and creators and communities I've got to work with, meet, talk to, I wouldn't be where I'm at today, you know? And that's, realistically, that's going to be with me till the day I die. Um, because without them, I would not be where I'm at. I wouldn't have the podcast. I wouldn't have probably 90% of the things I'd done um i wouldn't have or i wouldn't have even thought of doing hello everyone just want to interrupt the video right here uh if you'd like to support me on any of my um variety of content uh i do have a throne as well as a ko-fi so make sure you go check that out uh, i want to thank you all so much for watching let's get back into the video so it's definitely an interesting thing um but yeah so i would say if there's any like because, you know, you kind of haven't been doing much. Is there any plans for you specifically to, you know, maybe make something, you know, maybe like a project or something in the future? Or I had an idea. It would kind of be like, so I want to I want to make another group because I really enjoyed the process of bringing it up and watching it grow. I I just part i don't want to say part of me wishes i didn't do it for rindo I, I i'm happy i did but i want to do something that's its own thing where it's just um it's, it's just a hangout joint because that was something that drove a lot of people away from joining in the first place the group probably would have grown maybe a bit bigger if we didn't have that name on it um because people hear it and they think oh okay i'm not a rindo i can't join man that sucks yeah um, you no know, matter how hard we emphasize, no matter how hard we emphasize, it doesn't matter. People will still think it, and it's, it's nothing we can really do about it. Because um, I don't think any of the people who are on staff right now want to go through a whole rebrand. Um, That's fair. Because you lose your a little bit of your identity doing that, and what made you you. So, like, I, I had the idea of starting a group again, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen for another while. Because I, I have a lot of real life stuff coming up. Um, got my twenty first birthday coming up in just under a month. Uh, and I'm probably gonna be like working on moving out within a year. So it's it's a lot coming up all at once. Um, no, that's that's valid. I was gonna say, yeah, life life comes first, no matter what you do. You know, I mean, realistically, it's an amazing platform, but you you have to take care of yourself first. You know, regardless. Um, regardless of what people say like you got to take care of yourself first so out of curiosity because you mentioned your birthday is coming up the big two one that's crazy i didn't know i was that much mm -hmm. older than you that yeah makes, that that makes me feel old bro <laughs> i hate it here um fine yeah, no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess i'll ask uh is are there any at least big plans for the birthday at all 
Uh, yeah, my parents are taking me to Vegas for the weekend. Fair. I still have yet to go to Vegas. <laughs> Fair. That'd be a fun one. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm I'm super excited. Yeah, it's uh, August second is coming up. It's coming up quick. Bet I will I will mark that down on my calendar, and I'm just gonna text you at any random given point and just be like, "Hey, cheers, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> you know damn well I'm drinking the whole weekend. Oh, I know. I know. But I, I got I to at least hit you at least once with a cheers. And if I don't, then shame on me. Um, but, yeah, because I was going to say, I, I know I've seen uh, I've seen you hang out at a bunch of, you know, bar instances and stuff, you know. So I would say, out of curiosity, like, what kind of led you to going to, like, to hosting, like, bar instances and stuff? Like, what, what drove that out of curiosity? So it was uh, it was initially just because I I saw the world drop. I want to say it was early 23. I want to say it was when the Midnight Bar came out. And I saw friends who hung out there and it seemed really cool. And I one day I was bored. I was like, it was midday, I want to say. And I'm hopping around and I hop into one. And this was still in my early days of starting the Rindo cult. So it was... I don't want to say a personality trait of mine, but anytime I saw one in public, I had to say something. Um, and I say one to this one guy. Um, username is It's Clouds. And I started talking with him for a bit. Um, and what really sold me on coming to the, uh, them for as long as I did was because I met him. And I was like, man, I can meet some really great people here. So I kept on hopping around. Um, I hosted my own bar instances. It, it really is a good way to drive yourself to be more social because if you've got someone who's behind that bar at the midnight bar and is dead quiet, it's, uh, I don't want to say boring, but a little bit. It's awkward. Um, yeah. No, that's... Yeah. No, I, definitely so awkward. It, it is really a way that I got to force myself to be social. I got to learn how to talk to people about what they want to talk about. Um, and... Uh, what and I just kept on going. I tried my best to host one every Friday, but work came up, so I don't really have time for it anymore. Um, but no, the, the reason I brought up the the name it's Clouds is because that's the man I'm currently engaged to. I met him at a midnight bar back in April of uh, of 23. Um, that's adorable. First and foremost, and... that's <laughs> you, you, so you literally can say, yeah, I I met I met uh. I'm in my SO at a bar and it not be weird. Yeah, no, I did. I did meet him at a bar. Um, but uh, yeah, no. So like, that's, that's, that store. Like, I mean, it's, it got me going to midnight bars a bunch. I met all, hell, I even met someone who I've met IRL uh, once before. He lives a few hours North of me and I went to go visit him. We uh, went to some of his bars and hydrated. Um, <laughs> I don't condone underage drinking. <laughs> yeah, you wherever it's at, right, right over there. Yeah, we don't, I don't condone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but, uh, no, uh, we don't condone underage drinking here. It happens, but, nah, but we don't condone uh, it. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I went into town with him for a few hours. Um, so it was also it was cool because at that time I went to go visit him. I had a friend that I met through the Rindo cult in town visiting me. Um, I think you remember him. His name's Ding. Um, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had I had Ding visiting me. Um, it was March of this year, and while he was here, we stopped by and we call him Country Roads. It's his nickname. Um, he's a fantastic guy. Love him to death. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've met a lot of great people at Midnight Bars, back to the original conversation. So it just kind of kept me wanting to go back and back and back. And also because my dream job is being a bartender. So, you know, having a place I can, I won't say practice, but practice the social side of it. It's nice. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll say um, as somebody, it was only like a two night thing, but I did bartend uh, a weekend at a, at a local bar. Um, it's definitely a different type of breed. <laughs> um, that will never happen again. I'm pretty sure the only reason why was because the per the bartender at the time had to 
bounce for like a good portion both nights. I was of age, but I don't want to. I wasn't technically employed to work there. Um, I did as a you know because they helped me out type of moment. But yeah, being a bartender though, that's a definitely a. I don't want to say an, it's definitely not an easy thing, but it's definitely a. It nah, takes it. It takes a lot to do. Um. Yeah. So. Best of luck on that. Um, now, out of curiosity, because you were talking about Midnight Bar, but have you ever tried like any of the other bars uh, within VR Chat, like to kind of work with us? I did. Uh, I think it's called the Sunset Bar. I think. Um, I. It doesn't have the same vibe to me. It it feels it feels off. It feels because like Midnight Bar was never really about the drink machine. That was a part of it but you know it was never focused on that sunset bar seems like it's more focused on the people who are behind the bar and want to give them a fun time instead of having a good time sitting at the bar and talking with people that's fair i was gonna say you know with midnight bar um it's kind of more based on the actual game itself rather than you know a bar you know it's it's more of a recreation rather than like oh yeah it's just a bar you know it's more of a recreation type thing i, I get that um, mm-hmm. I would say definitely, definitely vibing with the hot tub area in that in the in that back room. Um, <laughs> literally, oh God, not a, any any time like I get invited to those those instances, I'm like, is the hot tub open? No, ah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to go. Next instance. <laughs> Next instance. Like I don't go. I don't go to. I don't go to midnight bar too often. I do on a very like on a once at a blue moon occasion. It's mainly because my like I get like a group of friends that want to go to a bunch of bar instances and uh, you know, oh my gosh, uh, funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna go into that story. Um, at least on the podcast, I'll we'll throw it on the fucking uh, Ko-Fi though. <laughs> We'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely, definitely a different thing. And there's so many different types of bars with so many different types of atmospheres. It's definitely, definitely different to see, um, how many different types of bars there are within VR though. Cause there's quite a few. Oh, really. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot because I mean, if you want to count, uh, what's a drinking night is one. There's that midnight bar, the sunset bar. Uh, I could probably name a couple, just not right now because I'm not. Mm, they all focus on their own thing, and it's it it kind of creates this different atmosphere. Midnight bar is more about the actual environment, socializing. Sunset is more about the actual bartending experience, and drinking night i don't i don't don't think i have to explain that one um fair (laughs) yeah that's fair (laughs) um you know and i was gonna say it's definitely i mean that goes with really any type of thing when it comes to vr like whether it's a community you know a world or an avatar like it's all different types of experiences no matter how you look at it really um you know and speaking of kind of more on the avatar side you know so i i gotta ask if if realistically because the rindo cult mainly started because of a friend group so would it be the same if it wasn't rindo in my in my, i guess is my question so like if it was like a different avatar base com- like starting out right if you all had started out and let's say <laughs> uh let me i'll use a shit post for example like let's say the i don't want to use that as an example i was gonna say i was gonna say the brush but i don't know if i want to use that as an example because that could go oh, wrong. God. that could go <laughs> wrong that could, <laughs> that could go wrong in so many ways and i don't know so I, I i know what you're gonna ask and i could actually tell you um because after i had started the rindo cults there were a lot of other ba- like groups around a base model that had started as a cult there was the celestia cult there was i think the cadine cult there's ah uh, fucking uh i could probably think of a few others i'm just blanking on them right now but there were a lot of other groups that were like yeah here's a base model we're gonna focus on they never took off they um i think the one that i saw have the most people 
was there was a group that we were kind of in competition with when we first started called Rindo Supremacy. Um, and, uh, or no, I think they just started as Rindo and then they changed to Rindo Supremacy. But they, um, the most I saw them at was about 1,600 people. I think they might be at 1700 now, but again, my point stands is like they, they, the other groups didn't take off, which I, as much as I hate to say, it kind of strokes my ego. It kind of does being like, yeah, I'm the only person who started a group around a base model that took off. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if we, like, if we really want to get some specifics, you got it knuckles. Okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you got me there. You you have you have thoroughly got me there. Uh, I, I no dude, I can't even fucking argue with that. <laughs> Is what they've been around since like what, 2017, 2018? Yeah. And uh with how many different groups there are, like realistically if you just combine them into one fat group, I mean yeah. It there's Oh a lot. god, yeah, no, it's probably like <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, it's a uh, definitely one of the longest lasting uh, avatar based communities. I, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely, but, yeah. But oh man, you know, I'm I'm looking at the I I just looked up cult on the thing, and uh, yeah, I think the most I saw was 400. That's fair. Yeah, I think it's, like the whole the whole cult thing, right? It used to be, uh, it, it used to be more popular back in the day. But I think it's just, like, the idea of starting a cult has kind of died off since, like, last couple of years. Yeah. Maybe that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a cult, so I wouldn't know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, no. We're, 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 a, we're, a, we're, you know, we're, we're a squad over in the Novid squad. We're not a damn cult. Yeah. Gear, I know if you're watching this, no, we're not starting a damn cult. No. Um. Don't, don't figure Kobe. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Scout, Scout, you're not allowed to make art of the fucking... Nobody's allowed to make art of the fucking Novid Squad cult. I don't like that either. Fucking, I know one of y'all watching this. God damn it. Not... I'm, if, if I get, if I you're get, instigating this, I want, I want you to know. I know, I know. I do it to myself. <laughs> I just, this is why I get, this is why I get bullied at every single event, bro. It's that, it's that, uh, that streamer community moderator like trifecta. You have the streamer and the, or the content creator, and then you have the community and the moderators just beating the shit out of the fucking content creator. That's that's literally yeah, that's literally no. my community in a nutshell, bro. I know it's out of love. I'm, I I know it's out of love, but still, y'all beat the shit out of me. Um, but anyway, um, but yeah, I think actually, I think that is all I have for you. Um, yeah, I I really don't have anything else, really. I mean, definitely. First of all, thank you for coming on the podcast. It was a lovely time. Oh, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, so I will say, uh, for the general listening audience over on uh, YouTube and Spotify, uh, you know, where can people find you? And you know, where, you know, anything that you want in the description, uh, the floor is yours. So, um, you can find me on uh, Twitter. My handle is Rylan R I E L Y N V T. Um. You can also join the Discord for the group I started, discord.gg forward slash rindocult, R-I-N-D-O-C-U-L-T. Um, it's a great spot to go meet new people, uh, make new friends. Uh, doesn't matter like what base model you use. You're, we're just here for a good time. That's all that matters. Um, but uh, I guess I could also throw my Twitch in there, which I think is also just Rylan VT. I, I don't know. I don't tw I stream often, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. Um, We'll throw it in the we'll throw it on the screen and into the description if it's a misspelling or something. You're you're good. You don't gotta worry about that. You're, you're gonna send yeah. it to me anyway. But yeah, with that, that's it. Well, that is the end of episode twenty. I can't believe I've done twenty episodes already. That's absolutely crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Ryland, thank you so much for coming on. It was a fun time kind of getting to know you a little bit more and, uh, you know, learning a little bit more about Rindo cult. This is actually really nice. Um, but yeah, so 
if y'all enjoyed the video or if you're listening on Spotify, if you enjoyed listening, um, please make sure to like and comment as well as uh, maybe hit that subscribe button. If you're already coming back to watch the other episodes, why not? So you're already coming back anyway. But with that, everyone inside and outside the ballpark, I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace.